So we take those questions about what happened inside Trump Tower and what the president knew and when he knew it to a member of the Trump legal team, Jay Sekulow. Jay, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. So you, you heard Don Jr. say on Tuesday that we've now, there's nothing more, that this is everything. Can you now say that we know everything about that meeting? I mean, clearly when he said that, uh, there was still a lot more uh, uh, to come out. Do we now know everything about that meeting, who was there, and what follow-up there was? Well, let me say this. I, you know, I don't represent uh, Don, Donald Trump Jr. I represent the president. And what I could tell you is the president was not aware of that meeting, did not attend that meeting, and Don Trump Jr. was was explicitly clear on his uh, interview on the Sean Hannity broadcast that that was in on the meeting. But look, here, here's the reality. The meeting in and of itself, of course, as I've said before, is not a violation of the law, but I think it's important to understand that it, as counsel to the president, the president was not aware of the meeting and did not participate in it. You've said that no law yeah. was broken, but do you accept yeah. what we heard from the president's pick to run the FBI, that what should have happened there, if, it, you know, a situation where you have representatives of a foreign government uh, offering assistance uh, to uh, in, in an election that what should have happened is that the FBI should have been notified? Well, I've wondered why the, the, the Secret Service, if this was nefarious, why did the Secret Service allow these people in? The president had Secret Service protection at that point. That raised a question with me. Uh, number two, we're, we're, we can't act like this is in a vacuum. We know for a fact, as were reported extensively in an investigative journalist piece by Politico, that the Ukrainians were in direct contents with DNC officials and traded yeah. information back and forth. So I, I think, you know, to say, I understand what Chris Ray was saying. Uh, that, you know, and Donald Trump Jr. himself said things should have been done differently. Having said that again, none of that is violation of the law. That's more process. Okay, I, I want to look at the big picture of the Mueller investigation. Yeah. The president has said sure. over and over again, again this week, uh, that this is a witch hunt. I, I, I want to get specific on this. Is he saying that the Mueller investigation is part of a witch hunt? Yes, yeah, look how it started, and yes. as it relates, especially as it relates to the president. But let me put this in context. How did this whole situation start? And we, we tend to lose this fact, and we should not. James Comey takes notes of a conversation or a series of conversations he has with the president of the United States. He takes notes. He puts them on a government computer in his government vehicle, put them in his government desk. He gets fired. Uh, by the president of the United States. He was terminated as the FBI director, which James Comey acknowledged the president had the right to do. James Comey then leaks those documents to a friend of his for the sole purpose of leaking them to the New York Times and with the okay. desire to be, and James Comey said this under oath, let me just finish this, John, said under oath that he hoped to get a special counsel, which he did. So the special counsel then is based on evidence that was illegally leaked. And that, to me, raises questions about the whole specter of what's going on here. So, so you're saying that the, when the president says witch hunt, he is talking about Robert Mueller's special counsel investigation. That is part of this so-called witch hunt. Yeah, when he calls it a witch hunt, when he talks about the scope and nature of the investigation, he's concerned about the nature of what's going on here. I mean, we, there are a whole host of issues that, that, as lawyers, we deal with in cases like that. Potential conflicts of interest. How would, how would um, for instance, James Comey be a witness in, in a situation when he has this relationship, not just with, with uh, the special counsel, but the way in which he testified? But let's so, not also forget that it was James Comey that said three times, and he acknowledged this under oath to the president, that he was not under investigation. So the president told me uh, in, in, in the Rose Garden that he would be willing to testify under oath about this. Here's what he had to say. Would you be willing to speak under oath to uh, give your version of, of 100 percent? So if Robert Mueller wanted to speak with you about that, you I would, would be, be glad to, to, to tell him exactly what I just told you, Jim. So does that stand? Is the president still willing to speak under oath to special counsel Robert Mueller, who you just said he thinks is part of a, a witch hunt? Look, the president was very clear that if, if it came to that, and I don't think it will, but if it came to that, he would do that. Uh, the president was very clear on that. But again, there has to, you know, when you look at what's going on here, and I, I look at this, of course, as the lawyer from the legal perspective, and I keep going back to this fundamental issue. What is the legal statute that has been violated here or alleged to be violated here? What would be, in other words, subject of that questioning under oath? So here's, here's what I, I would say. The president's been very clear and very direct on his statements. There's nothing I can add to those 
other than saying this, the nature upon which this whole issue developed over the last several months raises serious questions as a lawyer. And any lawyer that was looking at this issue would say there's a lot of questions that have to be answered here on how this started, where it went, where it's going. But Those no questions backing have down, to be asked if you're but, a good lawyer. No backing down on his offer to testify under oath. When do you think this could happen? I have no I don't I don't think it's I don't think it will happen. But if the president you don't think said it will happen? he would do it if yeah, at this point we have no indication at all whatsoever. Uh, of, of an investigation of the president with regard to any of this. So the special counsel has, has a, 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 a mandate. He gets his mandate. The pres but, you, you asked him the question in the Rose Garden. The president answered it. So, okay. I, you know, I take the president on his word there. Okay, one last question. Senator Warner sure. says that he is concerned that the president will issue pardons to the key figures in this investigation. Will the president rule out giving pardons to people like Michael Flynn, Paul Manafort, uh, any others that are in this investiga investigation? I had, have not had the conversation with the president about any of that, and I wouldn't share it if I did because of the attorney-client privilege. But I, I've not had that conversation with uh, the president on that and what he can, could or could not do. He can pardon individuals. Of course, that's because the founders of our country put that in the United States Constitution, the power to pardon. But so, I have not had those conversations, so I couldn't speculate on that. So pardoning the key figures in this investigation is not off the table? It's something I'm, he I might just do. told you. I've not had a. I, well, no, I ha, no, I can't say that. The president told me uh, in conversations that I've had with him about a variety of issues. We've talked, but we've not talked about pardoning individuals in this at all. So you're asking me to speculate on something I cannot speculate on. All right, Jay Sekulow with the president's legal team. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, John.